Hey, and welcome back to Can It Be a Mead? This is episode number three, and I'm excited to share yet another one of these with you guys. Let's just jump right into this. We have two wheels, different ingredients on each one. Let's just do it. We're going to spin this first wheel, which has a bunch of fruits on it. I've changed some things. It has a choose two option. Um, I added coconut, and I moved the wheel of amaretti flavors over to this one. So let's do it. I'm going to shuffle. Here we are, and our ingredient we're gonna have to use is, oh, it's almost a choose two, lime. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Got a little applause there. Um, we have lime, and let's see what our other ingredient's gonna be. Here's our second wheel, which has a bunch of spices and other kind of ingredients on it. Let's see what our second ingredient will be. We have lime and... Oh, what on earth? Okay. Lime and peppercorn. Um, I did put... I mean, I put peppercorn on here for a reason. I wanted to make an option. I never anticipated lime and peppercorn. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to go and buy some ingredients and then I'll tell you my plan. All right, here we are. I have all of my ingredients. I went and went to the store, of course, bought stuff. I'll go ahead and tell you my recipe and then I'll explain a few things. I'm using about three quarters of a gallon of water, um, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, depending on how full this cardboard gets. 1.5 pounds of orange blossom honey. Um, that I have. Then I juiced about 12 lemons, or not lemons, limes, excuse me. And uh, so I juiced all these, got about that much lime juice. I don't know how much I'll use yet. That'll be on the screen. I will be using the Lauvin QA23. It's a um, pretty good mead yeast in general. It's not very temperamental and it can, I think it's pretty consistent. So I'll use two grams of this, just to make sure there's enough. And then of course we have our peppercorns, which will go in the secondary. I don't know how much of these I'll use yet. That will be on the screen. Let me explain a few important things about this. I want this mead, of course, to be as good as possible, which means that I have to really think about the ingredients. Lime, peppercorn, um, don't, I mean, I think of, immediately think of like, uh, maybe like a Mexican food or something where you're, you can mix those two things. You get a spice and a lime like that. However, I really want this to be a drink that's good. I don't think it needs to be heavy. I'm gonna be hopefully getting to around 8% ABV, and that's why I'm using 1.5 pounds of uh, orange, blossom, orange blossom honey. I believe that that is enough honey to get me to that point. If not, I will add more. Um, the lime juice side, I'm just gonna do to taste. The thing with lime juice is it's acidic, obviously, and yeast and acidity sometimes don't necessarily go well together. So I'm gonna have to be kind of light with it in the beginning. Let's go ahead and get started with this thing. I have everything um, sanitized here. I have my honey, I have all of my, this is my sanitized bucket, I use star sand for all of my things. And yeah, I am going to first weigh out my honey that I need. So let me go ahead and weigh out one, or sorry, let me go ahead and put my uh, water in here because I don't want to put uh, put honey in first. I'm going to put in probably about a half of this carboy worth of water. All right, here's my mixed honey and water. I left some space on here because I want to have space for the uh, lime juice. I will be putting a little more water with this in a second, uh, and then I'll take a gravity reading, of course, all that stuff. I have a couple options. With the lime juice, I could put it all into the primary, and um, yeah, I think everything would ferment pretty well. Like I said, this QA23 yeast does a pretty good job of fermenting in general. Um, I do think a lot of the flavor is gonna be blown off in the primary, because most Lavin products are quick. Um, they're pretty fast moving. So I think my option is gonna be to actually put a little bit into the primary, uh, a little bit of lime juice into the primary, and then a little bit into the secondary, and uh, what I want this mead to end up kind of being like is a sweet lime mead. In my experience, I've made a lemon and lime mead before. I don't want this to taste like pine salt um, because I think my other one kind of did. So it's gonna be lightly sweet. 
which means we're gonna have to go through a couple hoops to get there. But let me go ahead now and um, here's how I wanna do this. This is gonna be different. I am going to actually add uh, a little bit of lime juice at a time and taste it while it's gonna taste like a really sweet, you know, drink for the moment. Um, I do think it'll be a good gauge for how much lime juice I wanna add. All right, so it took um, more lime juice than I thought. I, all, I used all of my lime juice that I made, which was a one and a third cups, basically, of lime juice to get to a point where the lime juice is fairly apparent in the primary. I'm gonna have to make some more lime juice or buy some or something because uh, obviously I'm out. So now I am gonna go ahead and add a little more water on top of this thing. We're gonna mix it up again and we're gonna take a gravity reading. Actually, to get a more accurate gravity reading, I had to pull a little bit of water off. I put too much on. Um, this is my yeast that I was I rehydrated at the beginning of this process. I'm gonna go ahead and pour them straight into here and hope that I have enough room. And then we'll take a gravity reading so it's accurate. Our gravity reading here shows that I'm really close to that 8% mark. We're at 1.058. Now, I'm content with that being below 8%. I wanted to get to 1.060, because that is essentially, or, ooh, maybe, hold on, let's see. Yeah, I wanted to get to 1.060, because that was, that's exactly 8%. Uh, however, we're at like 7.8 or something like that. I'll put it on the screen. So I'm content with that. The yeast, the uh, honey water, everything's in here, the lime juice. I think it's at a good point for the primary. Um, we're gonna let this thing ferment. And then once it finishes fermenting out of the primary, I'm going to stabilize it. Now I have two options to do this. I can either stabilize by using potassium sorbate, which is a like a chemical stabilizer essentially, or I could pasteurize it. And what I think I'm gonna do is uh, pasteurize this thing, meaning I'm gonna heat it up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes uh, in my oven, and then that will kill off the yeast after the primary. But we're not there yet. Let's see how this thing ferments to the primary. Um, I'm gonna stick my airlock on it, make sure I write down my information, which is super important. Every time you make a mead, write down what you put in it, and we'll see how this thing turns out. Um, I'm curious. Hopefully you're curious. Does a peppercorn and lime mead work? Let's find out together. Also, because I forgot to mention this, because this is a lime mead and still a traditional mead dish, uh, there's not a lot of yeast nutrients. So I'm gonna add some store-bought yeast nutrient to this thing early on. I'm gonna add it all in the primary, and then I'm gonna shake that up. And that will allow it to ferment more effectively, and it hopefully will not struggle any. So uh, now we can start the fermentation. It's now after the primary, 14 days later since we started this thing. I know it's done fermenting because I have gone ahead and taken a gravity reading and it is at 1.000. So we started out that 1.090, I believe, and now um, we're gonna be you know, leveled out. So we have our percent completely through. I have not taste tested it at all. So let's see what it tastes like currently. It's very clear, surprisingly. Very lime smelling. Definitely a little honey character. I have a feeling it's gonna be uh, kind of sour. Ooh, much more lime on the nose than actually on the palate. That's pretty good as is. That's very refreshing. It's summertime, you know, it's like 98 degrees right now, so it's pretty hot. This thing's pretty refreshing just as is. I've done um, lime things before. I've done li lemon meads before. Um, I mean, I could almost bottle this thing and be, you know, happy with it. Wow. However, that's not the test here. Uh, this thing has, um, oh, I need to describe it a little better. This thing, the lime flavor is definitely there. It's at the end of the palate. So the, it's going through kind of a structural um, tasting of you start off with a little bit of lime character is moving through some floral notes, and I think the floral, uh, floral slide comes from the honey, but there's also tropical, tropical sides coming from the lime and the orange blossom honey that we used. So you're getting kind of both sides of that. Uh, there is warmth from, from the honey, and it's still young, so obviously it needs age for everything to meld together. And then you kind of end off with lime flavor. 
I mean, that thing's pretty good as is. However, let's now move this out of this container. It's got a bunch of floaties in it, and I wanna make sure and get it off of that, for one. We're gonna move it out of this container, and let's talk about the peppercorn um, situation. Guess what I just did? I opened this peppercorn grinder right here, and it spilled everywhere because I did that. Yay me. All right, so that was quite exciting. I spilled peppercorns everywhere, and um, you know, I'm gonna pay for that later as I pick them up for the next few months, basically. Now, uh, here's my moved over product. It's degassed a little bit in that process, which is normal. Now we're going to take and put some peppercorns in. I went ahead and dropped two little peppercorn kernels into my uh, sample I had earlier, just to see if they'd impart any flavor. I don't know if they will or not. Uh, yeah, it's not really, I mean, I think five minutes is not enough time to impart flavor. Here's what I'm gonna do. I've got a scale here. I am going to make a like a dry hopped little bag for these peppercorns. I don't know how much to use. Uh, in fact, honestly, I'm probably just gonna weigh out a couple grams. So let me go ahead and pour, let's say I use uh, eight grams. That's just a number off the top of my head. We can always pull them off early too. Okay, here is my eight grams of peppercorn. Now, I don't think I made my cheesecloth. Well, maybe. Let me see if I can tie this thing to where it'll work. Okay, I've got like a little cheesecloth bag of peppercorns. I had to get a little bigger one. It's a little bit big. I am gonna just shove this bad boy right down into here. And I tried to tie it well. They're probably gonna have a couple peppercorns get loose. But um, what I'm gonna do with this thing it, when it gets heavy, it'll it'll start to sink to the bottom. So <coughs> we're gonna take this thing with our eight grams of peppercorns and I'm gonna leave it in. I'm gonna be taste testing this, not always on video, but uh, probably once a day to see how the peppercorns are imparting flavor because I've never used them inside of a brew like this. They could be a fast um, imparter uh, flavor or they could be slow. We'll find out. So here is after X amount of days with peppercorn now on this mead. All right, it's been about um, probably seven or eight days since I put those peppercorns on. And well, I should say this. it was seven or eight days when I did something different. Uh, I'll show you a picture. The peppercorn, because of the little bag it was in, didn't really impart flavor very well. So I had to do something different. I actually ground up some of the peppercorn um, and put it in there, left that for about 24 hours, and then I racked it over into this. In that same time span, uh, I didn't do this on video because it was late at night when all this happened, but I did stabilize this with potassium sorbate. And the reason I did that is because I want to now be able to back sweeten this. So let me get a quick taste test of what this tastes like with the peppercorn flavor. You definitely get the lime on the nose. Don't really get any peppercorn. Uh, I also I also just cut up a bunch of limes because I have more lime juice. So I might be getting a little bit of aroma from that. Yeah, okay, let's taste it. Definitely bitter. Peppercorn has a weird taste in a, a drink. I definitely get the pepper side. It's kind of, um, I thought it was sandy first. It's not sandy tasting. Yeah, I definitely get that slight black pepper taste. It also added some um, some mouth feel to this, which is interesting. It made it a little more full, and uh, I find that to be pretty interesting. The lime is definitely there. It needs a bolstering of honey character, which can be done very easily. The reason I, I use that potassium sorbate is because I want to back sweeten now, bolster honey character, and of course I got a little more lime juice here. So we're gonna add some in to see if we can um, kind of make this a little more what I want. So let me go ahead and mix in, a, I don't know how much honey yet, and maybe a little bit of lime juice, and I'll tell you um, what I've done ultimately. All right, so a grand total, I mixed in probably, um, I didn't exactly measure how much lime juice, but like four tablespoons of lime juice, roughly, and 1.5 ounces of honey. Here's the result. It tastes a lot like um, 
maybe because I had one recently, but a Bud Light Lime, which is not bad. I, in fact, I really kind of like it. I think the peppercorn flavoring, while it's not very strong, it does add the mouthfeel. And there is like a slight hint of um, pepper heat. I don't know if that makes sense. So like when you put pepper on something, you can get the spiciness from it, sort of. I kind of get that spiciness on the, on the uh, palate. The lime flavor is there. It's not too overwhelming. I think lime can be overwhelming. And the honey, I didn't really put too much to make it super sweet. In fact, I'm going to take a gravity reading here and I'll tell you how much or what the gravity change is. It's probably, it, this landed at 1.000. So we're probably only at 1.002 maybe, but let's find out. Yeah, I was really close. The new gravity is 1.003. Um, so we've only gone up just a little bit. And the good news is because we use potassium sorbate, which is a stabilizer. Um, I know that some of you are frowning that I'm using a stabilizer in my mead. Uh, this will not re-ferment. So well, it shouldn't at least, we're gonna find out for sure. So my next step, pre usual, I wanna make sure this is not gonna re-ferment. I'm gonna put my airlock back on, wait about 24 hours, 48 hours, look to see if there's any re-fermentation. If there is, then I'll have to re-stabilize and do all that stuff. If there's no re-fermentation, we're gonna go ahead and bottle this thing. And currently, I think this could be a mead, but I am gonna get some um, assistance from somebody else to help me decide if this can be a mead. Um, so let me go ahead and wait a few days and then we'll bottle it. All right, it is time to bottle. This mead is currently about a month, about 42 days old and um, I, I like where it's at. The pepper is very aromatic. Like I opened this up to get a little taste test and I could smell the pepper and tasting it. The pepper definitely adds more mouthfeel. It definitely adds a little taste too. A little that smoky, peppery kind of taste. I don't have a better description, but uh, I like it quite a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and bottle it, throw my labels on. I'm calling this the pep in circumstance because uh, I think that's kind of interesting and it's lime and peppercorn mead. So I'll throw my label up on the screen right now, but let me go ahead and bottle this. And then I'll tell you about my special friends who are gonna help me um, do this taste test. As you see here, I have a bunch of uh, the bottles now, bottled, labeled, they all look pretty nice in my opinion. And I have enacted and asked for some help from some friends. So I don't just wanna be the one to tell you if this can be a mead, I'm gonna get some help. So. Let's find out if lime and peppercorn can be a mead. All right, here we are with the taste test portion of this. Now I've invited some friends. This is Andrew and Chris here to help me and they are some of my patrons. Um, and you know, they, they support me and I just really appreciate them. And uh, they were the first ones to jump on this opportunity. So I'm glad they're here. Uh, thanks for helping me out guys. Okay. Yeah. Time. So uh, we are gonna be Again, taste testing this. And I, I just told them, I want it to be a, your genuine reaction. If you like it, you like it, you hate it, you hate it, whatever works. So uh, give me your first few notes, guys. What do you think about the aroma of it before we go too far with tasting? What do you get on the nose? The lime is like super, super present. It, um, it's tough to pick anything else out, but that the, there's a lot of like lime punch to that. Yeah. Yeah, it's very citrusy. Almost, almost on the point of like a sour, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's what I get. So the um, we hadn't talked about this, but the the name is Pep and Circumstance, um, <laughs> and uh, I was just trying to find some clever name. But the the thing with the peppercorn side, I don't get a lot of it. I get a little bit on the nose mainly. It's hard to tell. Pepper is one of those weird. It's got a it's got a smell to it. Of course, it has a taste, but um, to me, it has a chalky smell. I know that sounds weird, but do you guys get any peppercorn on the nose? I can smell it in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a, not, not an aftertaste, but a little bit of an afterthought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'll explain it a little bit, kind of how that, that went. Let's go ahead and taste test it. All right, go. Okay. You get the lime. Get the lime straight For up. sure. Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah. It almost just, you know, like, just having a nice fresh lime in the mouth. That's pretty much <laughs> it. 
<laughs> yeah, the lime, the lime's very, uh, very much in the forefront. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really taste the peppercorn, um, and I honestly I haven't had any uh, anything with like spice in it before, so I wasn't sure if I'd get any heat there either. Uh, but I'm not getting that right now. Yeah, I don't really get the peppercorn that much, but it's still pretty good. To me, that peppercorn pops up more on the nose than it does the actual palate. Mm -hmm. um, it, I think the, in this case, the peppercorn almost added more mouthfeel. Like to me, this is, this thing's pretty light. We're only at about seven and a half percent, but the body on it feels pretty full. I don't know if you guys get that. Yeah. I think part of that's from the peppercorn. It's good though. It's not, um, I think they're it has a little bit of sweetness left, but it's not sickly sweet. It's a, it's, it's a good balance. Mm -hmm. I like the carbonation to it. It I feel like it uh, opened it up a little bit. Yeah. I, I think carbonation um, can fix a lot of things and also can like well, something like this that's lime, it definitely helps to fill it out. Yeah. Make it taste a little... Yeah. Uh, it's very beer-esque to me. Like, it tastes to me kind of like a... Corona. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> something... That's what I was thinking. I wanted to say it, but I didn't... <laughs> there. Yeah. But... You know, when you put a lime in a... In a uh, you know, or even like the Bud Light limes that they have to come out with. I just had yeah. one recently. I do wish the, uh, I could have got the peppercorn a little more, um, but it's a hard, it's weird to use. Peppercorn was funky. I had a hard time getting it to work. Yeah, how did you implement it? Um, so I started off by literally taking actual peppercorns and putting them in like a little bag and then putting it into the carboy. And I learned real quick that peppercorns are, they have a shell, obviously, and that shell doesn't really let out flavor. So I, Ended up pulling that out and then literally grinding some peppercorn and putting it into the brew, uh, which made a big mess. But at the time, whenever I tasted it, the peppercorn was pretty strong and it was prominent. But I think after back sweetening and after a little bit of age, it started to fall off pretty quick. So I probably should have over peppercorn tasted it, you know, flavored it. What, um, what color peppercorns do you use? Just plain black ones or? Yeah, I just yeah. kept it simple. I didn't do anything crazy. I had enough trouble getting the stupid peppercorn grinder open. They don't make those <laughs> things easy to get the peppercorns out. So I was, that was quite the event. But I think the AV, ABV plays into this a lot as well. Mm -hmm. I think if this had been any higher than what you had put made it at, I think it would have made it too astringent almost, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a very, very easy to drink. Like, you could put these down like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what I was going for right there. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, so in your opinion, um, now, and I always try to say this in everything I do, I am not the master mead maker. I'm sure somebody could make this in a different fashion and probably make it even better. But do you think this combination of flavors can be a mead? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, I would say so. I, I think it can. Um, again, I challenge if anybody's watching this and wants to try it yourself, um, go for it. I, it. I guarantee you, you you might be able to do it better than me. You probably can, but uh, it's um, it's a pretty good combination. It's very refreshing, especially being in the summer right now. This thing is a perfect summer drink. I mean, exactly. Yeah, like, I would agree. You can definitely just put a couple of these down. Nice outside. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Hey, well, guys, thank you so much for your help. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, you guys are awesome. So thanks for helping me out. No problem. Anytime. Cool. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for sending uh, free meat. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Sweet. All right. That's the end of episode number three. Um, I want to say thank you to Andrew and Chris for helping me out with that taste test. It was a lot of fun to get to do that. And um, again, they, they are some of my patrons. If you want to support me on Patreon and help the channel continue to grow help me um, really continue to run to run the channel and uh, upgrade my equipment and content in general go check that out that's in the description 
Um, you get some exclusive perks. You also get to do kind of unique opportunities like this. So thanks to them, I appreciate them a lot. As you saw, the pep in circumstance, um, it can be a mead. The combination lime and peppercorn can work. And I encourage you, if you would like to try this, um, I, I think it's worth a shot. And it's pretty refreshing. It's pretty good. It's worth, worth a shot. So go ahead and try that. The recipe is, is of course down below in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. The best thing you can do to support the channel and help continue to grow this mead community um, is to, of course, at least on this video, hit like and maybe subscribe if you wanna see some more. But then in all mead making spheres, whether it's my channel, any other channel, um, like their videos, share their videos, share mead content so people understand what it is and we'll pe people will start to hopefully maybe um, buy it more often, which then means it's in the liquor stores and yada yada. So help the mead community grow because uh, I think it is a fun world to be in and hopefully you're enjoying it too. Thanks again for watching this video. Hit those links down below if you want to support the channel and I uh, hope you have a great day. So with that, cheers. Cheers.